Tiffin Shanks, Shanks Sanctuary. No, 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 Tiffin Cabana. I better get this right. Kaba. You help me out with this, dude. It's the color Kaba, I think. C A H A B A. Kaba. Oh, hey, it's you again. You looking for uh, some more piss poor content? Fully dangling. My belly's hitting on there. Gobble up the lap ceiling. A little sack. Well, you're in luck. We got another one here in the shop. Another brand new Sprinter van based RV product. They're uh, pumping these things out as fast as they can. No pun intended. This is a pump right here. Uh, but this is what we've got in the shop today. It is a 2002, 2001 something uh, Tiffin Kaba. I have no prior experience to these. I haven't shopped for them. I, this is the first one I've seen. I just noticed a few things on it. And I was like, great, let's, let's do another piss pour. Called you up, bud, got you down here. I don't see anything worth mentioning in here. It all looks... Looks factory, it all looks factory Mercedes. Pretty much brand new. It has uh, the dealer plate on it still. So the clients probably used it once. It's in the shop. We added the Van Compass 4.3 suspension system. And we also added a uh, rear roll bar. So upgraded shocks, upgraded rear springs, and upgraded shocks up front. Van Compass uh, 4.3 system, so shocks in the rear. They're adjustable, really nice package, bigger leaf pack as well. You know, it's just another overloaded Sprinter van from the factory. You'd think they would address these issues before they left. So here's the sway bar, and it's a, uh, it's a ring finger. Um, that'd be nice on like a Volkswagen Golf or something, you know, like a 2,000 pound car, not a uh, 9,000 pound vehicle. So, Tiffin product right away. Let's look at this ladder. It's just like a Revel ladder. Um, it's cheap steel and it's bolted together. There's no welds. Pretty much a disposable product. We could go for a long time, but this is gonna rust. It looks like it's powder coated, but I, I don't trust it. So this is a Mercedes-Benz, right? It's supposed to be a luxury vehicle. And when I look at the coach builds and the accessories that they put on, all I can think of is like a Walmart mountain bike. You think you're buying a luxury vehicle, but the, the chassis, the drivetrain, Mercedes, you know, you gotta pay your Mercedes tax, but the steel bolt-on stuff, like this Molly right here, this is all steel, it's gonna rust. It's riveted together, the piece on here, and it's already, some of these rivets aren't very, they're, they're not super tight. So this is like a super inexpensive version of a Molly. And then uh, we look at the spare tire carrier, classic example, it's like this independent small company started making a cool version of a mountain bike. You see it at Walmart two years later with a super cheap version of it. And that's that's what this is. A swing away tire hooks to the uh, hinge here. And down here, you see the bolts are already rusting so they don't use stainless hardware. And it's just cheap steel. Attached to the door here, So that's what you get to listen to on your 170 to 180 thousand dollar vehicle. Uh, and the Owl Van version of this, we'll go take a look at it real quick. It moves a little bit, but it's such a way higher quality product. So let's see what we got in here. We got some power outlets, electrical world, shore power hookup. It kind of is what it is. It's, uh, oh, this is nice. Uh, from the factory, got a whole bunch of our uh, wire. They still, they didn't even bother cleaning it up. Yeah, not even a vacuum for delivery. Ah, it's a Mercedes Benz. You'll roll out the red carpet for you. And no, you're just, you're getting a forest river pop-up. 
inside of a Mercedes van, you know. Next one are these running boards. It's like, let's see what we got holding on here. Running boards on, and here's the other carriage bolt. Neither of the heads are sitting flush, and uh, they're eventually gonna wiggle loose. We can also see these wires for the super sweet LED downlighting here. And they're not sealed. You can literally look inside the crimp. That's how a carriage bolt should look. So there's one correctly done. And then you go underneath here and here's two passively done, just not fully f fastened. And then let's focus in on our sweet LED wiring right here. And literally just like, asking for that copper to corrode. You can see wires hanging out of that back connector right there. So that's gonna get packed with salt, road grime, moisture, and it's gonna fail very quickly. It's like you've got one job and that's to connect wires and you can't do that. Piss poor. You know, looking at the size of this holding tank, it's huge. And how low it is, it's literally as low as the pumpkin over here. Let's look at this sweet adventure rig with a giant holding tank here, which I guess is a good thing, but then this has a two inch lift on it. So this adventure vehicle from the factory sits two inches lower. That's, I don't know, seven inches of clearance. I can almost do a hang 10. Good luck going anywhere besides a gravel driveway and not hanging up and dragging stuff. Again, it's just like, Super cheap. See what else we got underneath here that I can pick apart. Um, so more, more of the carriage bolts, not fully. Heads aren't fully embedded in. So again, they've like built this little skid structure. It's not even a plate. It's just a spot that's gonna scoop up dirt and hold it underneath this thing uh, that traps moisture. It's a steel structure. It's gonna rust, it's gonna rot, it's gonna fall apart. Let's take a look at this uh, freshwater drain. Just fully dangling right here. Yeah, nice freshwater drain. Just kind of dangling in the wind. It's like the, the little kid fountain peeing, you know? And it, this is like right, right at the curb appeal front of the vehicle it's sitting there i like i can't even crawl underneath this there's not really enough clearance uh, my belly's hitting on there yeah i can't even move around oh uh, that's funny so the fuel tank is right there i didn't even notice this the black water tank is underneath the fuel tank so they've got them stacked so if you want to service a fuel tank or anything you need to remove the black water tank the Mercedes factory is gonna love dealing with that. Yeah, I just can't believe how little clearance this has, even with a two inch lift and they mark it. This is a adventure vehicle. That's about it for this. I don't see anything else here really to point out, but we can go up top onto the rack. Take a look at the LED lights. If you're camping, <clears throat> this is how it comes from the factory. They're like pointed straight out, you know? It's like, why don't they just point them down. <laughs> up we go. All right, come on up here. There's three solar panels up here, and uh, these are the flexible panels. Uh, we stopped putting these on eight years ago. I think we were putting them on for a little while. We were using them on the curved roofs of trailers and stuff because they would flex. But they have such poor output. Did they say 100 watts on here? Yeah, I, I, that's not putting out 100 watts. So to fasten these down, they're glued. They're literally, they just gob up the lap sealant and set them down. So the next thing, they put load bars over them. So these photovoltaic cells, I'm gonna butcher this and you guys can correct me in the comments, but the, the electricity's gotta flow through these and when one of them gets covered, it stops the flow of, or the absorption of electricity. So they literally have a load bar one inch above the solar panel, blocking it from working efficiently. And that's on two panels. So they have significantly reduced the efficiency of these panels. Not only that, they're mounted directly to the roof. 
and the whole rack is sitting above it. So depending on the angle of the sun, you're always gonna be casting shadows on this. If it's coming from behind that Coleman AC unit, it's gonna be casting a shadow on it. And it's just like, they, they put these up here to say that there's solar, but it's not actually an efficient use of solar. Yay, I've got panels, but they're not working very well at all. Some of the piss pour up here, I don't see anything else really to point out. I can comment on this rack. It's kind of ungainly. It sits above the roof, and it's also a big flat front. Like I can't imagine the noise and the whistling, like the decibels that you're hearing inside of the vehicle. The rack system that we use, it sits really flush to the roof. Uh, when we put our ZAMP solar panels on it, they're sitting kind of flush with the top. There's no way that they're gonna get blocked by the structure up here. Like this is assembled and used by somebody that just, doesn't know what they're doing. They're just being told to do something and going ahead and doing it. Okay, let's go inside. So compared to the sanctuary, like this door area is a lot nicer. They didn't put a whole bunch of uh, switches and panels and stuff on here. They've got your awning control here. It's a powered awning. Um, that's kind of nice. Looks like they've got a solid surface countertop. This is uh, interesting. A lot of these are just white, but they yellow over time. And it looks like they made this yellow to match it, but it just kind of reminds me of that yellowed plastic. Let's get some batteries on in here and turn some lights on. Master light, okay. Kind of a, a nice rear bed layout system, overhead cabinets, your classic inexpensive RV microwave. You got your, your 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 nice plastic rear doors. There's no no sound deadening. Just imagine going down a, a dirt road and hearing that booming all the time. Easy to fix. Maybe the owner should do it. I looked at how much these cost new, and they're like one hundred and sixty thousand dollar to just under two hundred thousand dollars. And it's like, come on, dude. Oh, this is your wire loom right here, going up top. They literally put it inside of. Uh, a little sack. So rather than have it tucked and nice behind a cowling, it's just kind of sitting there going up. Um, you can hear the wire loom crunching back there. Small sliding windows again, heavily tinted windows, so turning it into a dark cave kind of deal. I don't know why this is hanging out. This is a CO2 detector. This is literally a brand new vehicle. I have no explanation for why that's hanging out. Let's take a look at this drawer right here. Um, you can see how nice that fit and finish is. It looks like it's actually failed. Yeah, yeah, you can see the block back here is falling off. You can also see the front. You have to look at it from this side, but the door front is uh, popping out. It's not sitting flush to the drawer. But this is definitely like the quintessential RV piss pour situation. You shouldn't have to deal with that right away. Here's some more fun stuff are these vents. Vent here, you can see the sweet exposed press board. You can see the crack. Unfinished, unsealed press board, literally like right next to the shower, right by the entry door. It's the spot where moisture is gonna collect and warp that wood, break it apart. Sweet floor with uh, all kinds of lifting going on. As cheap as cheap can be. Don't see anything really patty wampus on on here. There's just exposed ply back here. They didn't even finish this edge. Yeah, it's literally like sawdust falling off onto my hand. Big bathroom, don't see anything. Patty Wampus in there, uh, induction cooktop, that's fine. I think that's about it, you know. They put this little fridge in here. We put uh, 130s in, which is like probably twice the size of this, but you just get a little freezer and 
really not much room down there. You definitely want to add a cooler or something to this one. Let's go look at some owl van stuff in the other side of the spectrum. So the Revel is probably thirty or forty thousand dollars more expensive, and it is a nicer product and it's been on the market way longer. But accessory-wise, this is aluminum. It's not going to rust. It's uh, probably like three sixteenths thick, and then it has stainless hardware. Stainless hardware. Stainless hardware. It's not going to rust. It's going to last a lot longer. Here's your mountain bike components made by mountain bikers, and then there's your adventure components made by crappy, you know, what am I trying to say? Uh, Kmart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess Kmart's going out of business, so we can, we can bash them. Yeah, it's like your Kmart level componentry versus your independent high quality shop builder so but the owl van ladder it's aluminum it's powder coated it's welded it's all a really nice product you kind of get what you pay for and if you you look at the clearance underneath this van you can see it actually has clearance for going off-road like this is a setup where going to remote places you're gonna have a lot better time than you are on this uh, Tiffin RV manufacturer adventure vehicle. In conclusion, it's pretty much a Kmart mountain bike. There's nothing wrong with taking a Kmart mountain bike out on the trails if that's what gets you there. Just know what you're buying, know that they're tagging along. The Real, true quality products come from builders like Reparadise and uh, other small builders that kind of focus on the quality and quality products that are out there. We carry a lot of them, rugged design concepts, owl van. You're gonna have to do a lot of work to get this thing up the true overland van style stuff. It looks the part, it's not really playing the part off the factory floor though. So that wraps it up. Uh, drawers way overloaded. All this stuff jammed in here. <coughs> Look at underneath. So that's the bottom of the drawer. It overloads the drawer and it falls apart. So the manufacturer should have at least like glued the bottom of the drawer together. But all that stuff droops down and then it catches this. The poor guy can't close the drawer. I don't know, I'm just gonna pour some glue in there and uh, seal that up. And we get to peek inside and see what these guys do from the factories. 110 wire here. And here's another one. Just kinda dangling there. So if this is something that we did, I would at least fasten it to the inside of the cabinet here. Yeah, this needs to be fastened down so it's not just flying in the wind. And that's probably solid uh, solid copper wire inside of here, inside of this Romex. And eventually that cracks and fails. Induction cooktop is just kind of dangling here as well. I had to unplug it to replace this piece. I put a fresh Baltic birch block in there, and then I'll get this slide mounted. Well, that's interesting. I think I need to move it to a different spot. To address the issue of the slide that had broken, let's take a look at what we had in here. This here is a piece they use a piece of scrap to block the um, slide up. This piece of scrap that they had had pocket holes in it, so it split as soon as they put the screws in. I just replaced it with a piece of uh, Baltic birch and it's good to go. I'll get it all set up. Likewise, let's look at their wiring here. This is not attached to anything. Running all the way down into here, this wiring's just kind of dangling. Dangling wire here. We've got an outlet over here. More throw it in here. 
I lost my flashlight down here. This actually gives us a look down into our hole here. Kind of wasted space. Likewise, there's nothing holding the plumbing. Oh, I my flashlight again. I'm really trying to lose it. Made quick and made cheap. All right, here's your Tiffin sweet drawer. Guy right here doesn't uh, latch on to anything. And when you close it, it's got a little soft close function. See the nice inconsistent gaps. So I wanted to take a look at what Kaba is advertising this thing as. Maybe they would say it's light duty adventure uh, camper designed to park at your KOA where there's a concrete pad and a smooth gravel road to get your campsite. But here it is, the first image of it is sitting in a uh, kind of pine forest off road. It is out of this outdoor world impactful. We'll scroll down, small in size, massive in adventure. It's ready for just about anything. Are you, are you prepared to get hung up when you're driving around off-road? Maybe, uh, some nice photos here. Choose your adventure in your own style. Learn more, I'm sure you can go kind of spec this thing a little bit. We'll point out here how far this ladder sticks out from the body. Something I've actually called out on our website before. Look at this ground clearance right here. So that's that black water tank is sitting kind of underneath this uh, sidestep zone and that's literally like five inches of ground clearance. It looks like this image that they use you can't see the holding tank that was on this side or maybe they didn't have it underneath there for this image but there's more here that's missing. I took the time to aim their lights on the roof rack on there. And also this is out in the salt flats or some other dry lake bed showing this thing off road. Not a place I would want to go with it. Volta power system, that's pretty fancy. Sweet LED light package. It looks like these lights are pointing straight off in the distance. And then we've got our adventure gear. Yeah, wow, look at how far that's sticking out. I didn't even notice it when I was talking about it. Maybe this is a different ladder. Mounted Molly gear and bike rack. So you can put your bike on that riveted together rear Molly thing if you're feeling brave. Uh, I wouldn't do it unless it was a cheap Walmart bike. Yeah, there's their website. They're, they're selling this thing as an adventure go anywhere vehicle with five inches of ground clearance out of the uh, box. Let's go take a look at a ladder on here. This is some amazing video, not video, image editing here I did. The gaper gap right here when your ladder hangs way off of the uh, side of the van. Uh, you do want them to be kind of snug and uptight. Here you can see that ladder hanging tight. Just wanted to point out that Tiffin and Kaba is advertising this thing as an adventure vehicle and a go-anywhere vehicle. In reality, it's a go to the KOA.